Welcome to Whole CEO with Lisa G. I'm the best-selling author of The Boss Weight Loss. I'm bringing you the top tips to be unstoppable. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to actually pull up a chair with today's top experts in mindset, weight loss, business, and more. Learn our top tips so that you can have more energy, be fit and resilient, feel unstoppable, unshakable, and unbreakable. With over 20 years experience running one of only a handful of female-owned production companies in Hollywood, she served as executive producer for numerous television series and created and produced hundreds of hours of cable content over the course of her media career. I'm thrilled to welcome to Whole CEO, Carrie Zane. Well, thank you. I love the introduction. I love when people brag about me and I don't have to. Well, I, there's so much to brag about. I was looking at your credits and all the awards that you've won. Was it, um, come on, brag a little bit. Just drop a few things you've won. <laughs> you mean the Emmy? Oh, that thing, yeah. Oh, that thing? <laughs> I love that you focus on female um, interested, things that we're interested in and, and what a need there is for that to be a woman in this male dominated society. I love that. So let's jump right into your story because I've also faced fraud in my life. So can we talk about how you faced a devastating fraud and kept going? Yeah. So I, you know, it's interesting because I spent a, you know, a good amount of time in my life thinking that I was doing the right thing and investing the right way. And, um, in 2017, my whole world fell apart because mm -hmm. I found out the woman that I had trusted and my family had trusted with all of our savings, all of our money, had been running a Ponzi scam for 21 years. Uh, she wow. scammed 50 people, $40 million over the 21 years. And it was it was doubly devastating because she was someone that I considered my big sister. My mother took her under her wing. She, you know, we had family holidays with her. We, uh, you know, every birth, every divorce, every marriage, every, every epic moment in someone's life, she was very embedded in, in our lives. And so to find out that that person um, drained our, our life savings, um, it was just, it was the most deceitful and um, devastating thing that I, I think I've ever experienced. So, like a Bernie made off in, in female form? Yeah, 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 it pretty much was. And I remember someone saying to me when the whole Bernie thing came out and, and I used to say, you know, this woman, I said, you know, she's the smartest woman I know. And, you know, we keep making money year after year. And, and a friend of mine said, you know, it sounds like, and I'm like, no, 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 don't say that. No, 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 no. Too good to be it's true. Like her. if it's too good to be true, it's too yeah. good to be true. Yeah. So, um, you know, she's in prison now. Um, but, but it's, and there's a whole, probably another conversation we could have about the criminal justice system, but, you know, as a, a I have to say survivor now because, wow. because you know, we live, you and I live in that world of survivors, not victims, right? Usually. Right. Absolutely. It's like, how did you bounce back is what I want our audience to hear about, because I'm all about helping people bounce back better from the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, what are my choices? You know, do I crawl up in a ball and give up or, you know, you know, do I power on? And I have two daughters and, um, you know, spent a long time as a single mom. So like giving up wasn't an option. So it was like, okay, I, and I had, because I thought I had such a significant savings, I had stopped producing TV and I was writing books and, you know, kind of doing sort of retirement kind of thing. So it was like, okay, I'm going to call everyone I know and I'm going to say, hey, I don't want a handout, but I want a hand. And there were people who, you know, stepped in and, and started helping me reignite my TV career, which, you know, is is hard when you're kind of, you know, you feel like you're past your sell by date. Yeah. Um, as a woman, that's a huge other whole topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. So, but you know, I'm very lucky and very blessed and, and I, and I have people who are supporting me and, you know, and so I've reignited, reignited my television career. And, you know, I love, I always loved it. I love the creative process. And, um, and so here I am, you know, creating and developing a lot of TV shows and, you know, even through the pandemic, we've been able to kind of hang on. And so I love it that curling up in a ball was never an option for you because it's not just because of your daughters. I have a feeling like you stand for something more than that empowering. It's who you are, isn't it? Yeah. And, and I think sometimes it's despite, despite myself, I, you know, it's like, God, I'd really like to crawl up in a ball right now. And you're like, no, Carrie, you, you, you that's not who you, you know, no, you can't. And I'm like, no, okay. I'm just going to power through it. And I, and I do realize that it, um, it in, informs every part of my life and, and you'll understand this. So I love to hike and we have some great mountains here. Right. right absolutely. I always have to be the first one in line. I have to get to the top. I have to power through no matter how tired I get, or, you know, like I'm breathing heavy, but it's like, Nope, I'm going to get to the top. And I, and I do, and I don't want anybody standing in my way. So I'm like, I, I want to be the first in line. So I think I that's love what, it of a metaphor for what I've done in, in, in all of my life. I'm like, Hey, I'm just like, I'm marching it. I'm marching. I'm going. And I, and I do think that, um, as we talked about before, I'm a freak about fitness and, and taking care of myself and exercising. And I, and I truly believe that that, um, helps everything in my life. I mean, it helps my health, but also I would, you know, again, not crawling up in a ball. I'm like, I'm going to get on that elliptical. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to march up that mountain. And, and I think that fitness helps you, you take care of yourself. It's, it's mental and it's physical, but it, it does. It helped me get through that hard time also. Oh, I love it. I can't even tell you how grateful I am to fitness for all the many stops and starts I've had in my career and just I'm just sort of a hyper person naturally. So I actually feel better when I exercise the brain derived neurotropic factors and all of the positive, good feelings that you can accomplish. Is there any other ninja tips or tricks or hacks you have for our audience about how you jump started your career and ended up loving it so much? Well, I, I don't know if you were saving this for like the end, but I, um, I have always lived myself, my life in my career by when someone says no to me, that's when I get started. So, um, you know, that's the, it, it, it's facing those challenges head on and, and, and figuring it out. So it's almost like every part of life is this mental gymnastics to get to where you do get the yes. And, um, and I think that's it. It's just that drive of, don't give up. Don't, you know, if, if, in your life, if you say, well, they're going to say no to me, well, then the answer is always going to be no. Right. But if you do it. <laughs> maybe they'll say yes. And I so, and would that. it be great if they do? So that's, I think that that's like maybe my secret ninja trick. It's your secret ninja trick is no is where you get started. So it's, it's sort of like failure. Isn't it like failure, like in failing forward? It's like, if you just give up, if something flops, then where are you? Yeah. Yeah. You're just, you know, like you're just down at the bottom and it's, and, and I, the, you just can't, you just can't get them up. And I, you know, I have, my mother passed away last year. She was almost 101. Wow. And I, and I do feel like she is, she was that person who, who inspired and encouraged me to like always you know, no matter what obstacle that woman faced in her life and at a hundred, she lived through a lot, like, you know, like she didn't have refrigeration when she was born. Oh my so, God. You know I mean, like, so there was a lot, right? Yeah. She never gave up. And I remember she said to me, you know, and she was from Boston. So she had this really heavy accent. She said, you know, Carrie, life <laughs> is like a Ferris wheel. Sometimes you're at the top and sometimes you're at the bottom, but the good news is it never stays in the same place. And so you kind of go, okay, all right. I may be down at the bottom, but you know what? I'm just going to keep working through this and I'm going to get back to that top. And even if I just get to the sides, that's okay. Cause it's not that bad, you know? So 
I love I love the way that Noah is where you got started because I, I started this podcast because I want to help people bounce back better from the pandemic based on my many ups and downs. Like even my YouTube channel got stolen, all kinds of crazy stuff. My Instagram one time and like things can be hard when you have your own, you know, intellectual property and you're like, okay. And and I just want you to be, you're such a role model. I wanted to interview you because you've accomplished so much and there's always that bumpy road to success, right? It's never a straight line. Yeah, yes. You know, it's funny because I think sometimes even I used to look at other people and I'm like, God, they're so lucky. Everything just goes their way. They just, you know, but the truth is everyone has bumps. Everyone has hard days. Everyone gets no's. And so- I think if the message is we're all in this together and and we're all going to get no's, but you can get to that yes and you can achieve, do it. You know, don't give up. Don't don't think that you're that person who are like, you know, like everything bad happens. You're like you're flagging yourself. But um, we we can all get to the yes. We can all get to the yes. I love that. And I love the way you mentioned comparison because it's I've heard it said that comparison is the root of all evil and yet I know myself I have been there it's like when you see things from the outside looking in you really don't know behind that white picket fence what's really going on inside all these perfectly like beautifully choreographed photos on social media and someone's like amazing glam life in the private jet here and there so is there any tips you have for our audience about to just stay in their own lane and not compete with others Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that because I do think that social media has kind it's even elevated that that fear of, I mean, it's not really FOMO, although that's some of it, but that fear because everyone on social media puts their best foot forward, right? Their most I do it. Yeah, I do, I get it. Yeah, they you know, they do the filters and all that, but the but the reality is we all have warts and I I think that we all have to keep that in mind. So when you look at the social media and you look at their beautiful pictures and you look at their, you know, their engagement pictures or their lot weight loss pictures or whatever, know that they 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 have flaws, they have journeys, they have doubts. We we all you know, fear drives us sometimes, hopefully not all the time, but there, you know, there's a lot in there. And, and so we are all not alone. We're all on this journey together. I love that message because there's so many people that as female entrepreneurs, or we, we get started with a, a new business and we get started and we get this imposter syndrome and we're comparing ourselves and like, well, they've already done this, this, and that, like, I can't even get started. So any tips on how to just feel the imposter syndrome and keep going? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, you can own it, but own it for a half an hour and then move past it. I love that. Set a timeline. And I know you've done so much with producing amazing shows here in Los Angeles, where we both live. What would you say to our audience if they wanted to start a show like how can people find you and all your amazing wisdom bombs and your talent, which is vast? I love you. I want to hire you as my publicist. <laughs> wisdom bombs. I'm taking that one. Um, I, yes, I, I do believe that there are uh, lots of really good ideas out there in the universe. And and if if you're a person who's listening and you're like, you know what, I think, you know what? this is a good reality show or, you know what, I think my friends and I, we do this, whatever it is that's so interesting, please do reach out to me. This is your opportunity to have a touch point in Hollywood. And I love to be that for people. And so I have my website and it's my name. It's carriezane.com, K-E-R-R-I-Z-A-N-E. And there's a place there where you can, um, submit your ideas. It's a pitch me uh, page. So please do. I would love to hear everyone's ideas. And is there anything about brevity that you want to leave them with? If, if there's like, obviously, should they Google how to pitch something so they don't go on and on and on and on like, <laughs> get to the point? <laughs> yeah, well, what we call it is the log line. Yeah, give me, you know, one, one snapshot of what what the idea is. And then we can kind of take it from there. Well, thanks, Carrie. Thanks for being a wonderful guest. Thank you. Thanks for coming to Whole CEO of Lisa G. 
After over 20 years helping people lose weight and get fit, I'm so excited to announce that I found the missing link with my coaching. Message me if you wanna learn how to look better, feel better, and go faster with a master. Lisa G at lisagfit.com.